Need to charge your phone but trespassed from your local Starbucks? Go to a modern shopping center. Look around in the landscaping for lights with electrical outlets. A lot of newer locations install them to power holiday decorations. They're great because they usually leave them on 24-7. Grab a plastic bag at the grocery store. Search the parking lot for common trash like McDonald's bags the piggies toss after a frantic feeding frenzy. Wrap your phone in the plastic bag in case Tedward turns on the sprinklers. Place it in the paper bag and crunch it up so it looks like garbage. Plug into the outlet and make sure you're charging. Camouflage the power cable with loose ground cover, leaves or dirt. Hide the bag in the bushes and fall back where you can keep an eye on it. Wait 20 minutes, grab the trash, and go. If you're on the run and need to buy yourself some insurance, try using a dead drop spike. Dead drops are used by spies to pass and collect information covertly. Think of them as your own little buried treasures. Use a big pen like this. They make great vessels for hiding secret notes and money. Remove the ballpoint tip and ink reservoir. Take a $20 bill and roll it up tightly. Insert the bill into the empty pen body. There will be just enough space in the center of the bill to reassemble it like new. The tube is made of plastic and basically waterproof. The tip of the pen makes a great sharp spike that easily penetrates the ground. Find a location you can easily gain access to 24-7. As in, don't bury your pen behind a gate that gets locked up at night. Look for soft ground that you can easily push a spike into. Grass is perfect. Take note of exactly where you are burying your pen. I always snap a photo or take a video so I don't end up digging hopelessly for hours. Push your pen down into the soft grass. Be careful not to go too deep or the earth will swallow it forever. When you need to retrieve your buried treasure, use a pair of of pliers or a multi-tool to extract your bounty. I have multiple treasures hidden at various locations. I know that I'll always have an emergency cash stash if I can find it. Next time you're at the $5 store, formerly known as the $1 store, grab a few items. Fix Vaporub or generic menthol ointment is a very powerful tool. The bottle claims it's 100% natural, but most all ointments like makeup hair products and chapstick use petroleum as the main ingredient. When I'm stuffed up, I place a small dab on my finger and insert into my nostrils. It opens up my nasal passages and helps me breathe easy. Petroleum is flammable. Grab some cotton balls or rounds and smear on a bunch of the menthol ointment. Hit it with a Bic lighter and you've got yourself a mini inferno that will burn steady in wet and windy environments for a few minutes. Thanks oil. Staying dry and warm is priority number one. Study the maps of your local transit system. Starting at your current location, find the destination with the longest travel time that doesn't require you to deboard or transfer. This ride here takes four hours round trip via train. Listen to music, read or watch a video. Stay alert and don't fall asleep. That's four hours of being off the street, warm and dry. Rinse and repeat. Pawn shops are extremely valuable assets, especially when it comes to being prepared for survival situations. Where else can you make an offer on the ticket price? I got my Leatherman Super Tool 300 by trading an old knife and a $20 bill. Create a strong and trusted relationship with your local pawn shop. It's important, Marion. Trust me. Finding free self-defense tools on the streets is easier than you think. Auto parts stores always have interesting trash like this metal inner shock assembly. It's got a good foot-long length. It's light yet strong and easy to stow away in your backpack or coat pocket. Long steel braided fan belts like this can help you get your Indiana Jones on, creating distance between you and your aggressor. Railroad tracks always have lots of medieval-like objects lying around. Spent railroad ties that look like a big metal J will often be laying on the ground off to the sides. They've got a great ergonomic shape and fit well in your hand. Aside from being legit self-defense tools, you could use them as a pry bar or a makeshift digging device. If you get lucky, you'll find railroad spikes too. They are perfect for a million different surfaces survival scenarios. Possum mentality is the habit of keeping an eye out for resources that you pass as you're on the move. An old crowbar you find lying in the street, part of the metal frame to a garage sale sign. A rusty old hammer hiding in the dirt. A beat-up screwdriver you find in a ditch. Anything that can serve you as a tool for self-defense is a very valuable asset. Possum mentality. Master this skill. It will serve you well. Cigarettes are bad news. If you don't smoke, don't start. It's a disgusting habit that will kill you and cost you a fortune. Trust me, I've smoked for most of my life. A cigarette and a lighter can be extremely valuable tools on the streets. I've de-escalated many a bad situation by offering a smoke. Cigarettes are valuable bartering tools. People trade them for food and money. Smoking can be used as tradecraft. No one thinks twice about a person standing on the corner getting their nicotine fix. Don't kid yourself. Cigarettes will kill you. But used as a tool, they can be an asset. Wet socks? Get them drier quicker using your body heat. Remove your soggy foot blanket and wring it out thoroughly. Place the damp sock inside your coat or in a pocket close to the heat of your body core. Zip up and keep moving. 
You can also strap them to the bottom of your backpack and let them air dry. Either way, they'll be a little less wet when you go to put them on again. While you're at the dollar store, use your food stamps and pick up a jar of coconut oil. It's a food. Coconut oil burns forever, and you can use it as a moisturizer for chapped lips and other places that need lube. Use a birthday candle and break it in half, removing the wax but leaving the wick intact. Carve out a hole using a thin, sharp object about an inch deep. Place your birthday candle in the hole and light the wick. Now you've got a candle that will burn for hours on end. If you can't afford a multi-tool, Hunt down an old pair of made-in-the-USA pliers. Try thrift shops and garage sales. They have a million uses like picking up jagged metal, twisting wire, and giving complimentary dental extractions to the enemy. If you want to get your James Bond game on, add a multi-bit screwdriver to your arsenal. I love the ones that store the bits on board in the handle compartment. There's an attachment for every type of situation you may need to get yourself out of. Or... into... Motel rooms used to be cheap. Nowadays, they're $100 and up for the night. A common practice on the streets is to split a room. You'll be approached by a stranger, usually a woman, who offers to go in halfsies on the room for the night. Be very careful. You pay for the room and add the stranger as your girlfriend on the paperwork. She gets a card key and loads her stuff into the room. This stranger says she has to run out real quick and asks you to watch her stuff. She returns hours later, but this time with a dude or two. Now the fun begins. She claims that all of her money has miraculously been stolen out of her bag while she was out. To avoid getting a complimentary call, anoscopy. You gladly hand over all your cash and belongings after Dude 1 lowers his gun from your head. And just like that, you're on the streets with nothing. Foobar. While you're at the dollar store, grab a jar of peanut butter. Creamy, obviously. We're not psychopaths here, people. Peanut butter is nature's miracle food. It's packed with nutrients loaded with calories and proteins. It doesn't need refrigeration, and it lasts forever. Add some dollar store crackers, and you've got a meal or a sadistic torture device if you hide the milk. If you get a sunny day, it's time to air out your clothes. Taking a proper hot shower when you're homeless is a rare event. The sun's ultraviolet rays can kill bacteria on dry fabrics. Strip off your stinky socks, shoes, and whatever else you can. Give them a good shake to get all the dead skin flakes off. Let them bake in the hot sun as long as possible. You'll feel somewhat less dirty in your UV nuked threads. Potato chips are loaded with oil. They make a great emergency fire starter. Grab a handful and smash them up until they're semi-pulverized. Dump them on top of the Mylar wrapper. Start your barbecue with a Bic lighter. If they don't take off easily, add a couple squirts of hand sanitizer as an accelerant. Make your mini inferno last even longer by adding a rubber band to the party. Any burning rubber will let off a thick black smoke. Don't breathe it in. Your little volcano will burn for three to five minutes, giving you plenty of time to add your kindling and grow a fire. Makes you wonder what those oil-soaked chips do to your body. Apparently, there's these small metal tokens that were once used as money. Young people throw them from their car windows at fast food drive throughs I wait until they get their $10 taco and then move in to help clean up. I pick up all the shiny coins they've tossed. A couple hundred more and I can get my own mystery meat burrito. I always carry three extra pairs of wool socks on me. Wet feet are dangerous not only to your physical well-being, but also to your morale. Slipping your frozen phalanges into a pair of warm, dry socks is like nirvana. I keep mine in a waterproof dry bag. They weigh nothing, are cheap, and have a million uses in survival situations. Situations. Insert your dry socks. Roll the bag down from the top like you do when you're squeezing out the last bit of toothpaste in the tube. Connect the buckle. Now you have a little bag of air. Place your mini Zephyr on a smooth surface and sit on it. Most of the air will be removed, creating a squished down waterproof bag you can easily stow in your backpack. If you don't have a waterproof dry sack, plastic sandwich bags work great too. If you're on food stamps, the rule is you can only buy cold food. Purchasing hot food is not permitted. A common street scam is to go to a grocery store that has self-serve hot and cold food bars. The provided cardboard food boxes are identical for both hot and cold foods. People simply load up at the hot food bar, close the box, and proceed to the self-checkout machines. They place their hot food on the scale and select cold food as the category. If they get caught pulling this scam, they will lose their food stamp benefits for one year and face jail time and fines. Is it really worth it? I always carry three Bic lighters on me. One in my pocket and two in different locations inside my backpack. I try to get bright colors so they're easier to find when I'm impaired. In the U.S., they come with a child safety or future pyromaniac mechanism that makes it extremely difficult to light if cold or wet weather affects the dexterity of your fingers. I perform the exorcism with my Leatherman Super Tool 300. I select the all tool, place it under the metal safety band, and give a quick twist. Easy peasy. Now I can flick my Bic without the metal condom. Your own urine will keep you warm. Just find a bottle and pee in it. White mouth Nalgene's are the best. Use a Sharpie marker. Fatter the better. Mark your container with a large X. That way you'll know it's dirty and not accidentally drink it. Find a good hiding place to take a leak. Put your bottle wherever you're cold. 
It'll warm your ass right up. They say humans can only survive for three days without water. I've tried it, and by day two, you're hurting for certain. Find a commercial building. They have water spigots installed in reciprocal boxes along the outside walls. Head around back to the shipping and receiving zone. Scan the walls and look for a square box or metal faceplate, usually about two or three feet off the ground. You'll need a Silcock key like this to turn on the water spigot. You can buy one online for around $10. It has four hex socket keys. One of them will fit the box and spigot. The water in these lines is potable, meaning safe to drink. The word safe is questionable. I recommend adding water purification tablets to chemically disinfect the water, killing dangerous bacteria, viruses, and parasites just to be sure. Use your Silcock key to open the box. The spigot lives inside. Place the key on the spigot nut and turn it counterclockwise to open the water. Let the water run a few seconds, making sure it is clear and free of rust. Fill up your container per the water purification tablet instructions. Drop in your tablets, give the bottle a shake, secure the container to your backpack, and wait the required amount of time for the water to be disinfected. When time's up, flip your container upside down and unscrew the lid a little. Let some disinfected water bleed over the threads and cap. Add a powdered drink mix because chemically treated water tastes like ass. Fill up the tank and keep on trucking. When you're scoping out a place to stealth camp for the night, here's a few rules I always follow. If you're in a large downtown area, get the f out. Head to the suburbs, find a large shopping center and locate a fast food place nearby. Do a stealth recon behind the fast food joint. Check it to see if it meets the following criteria. It's got a wall or structure you can hide behind keeping you out of plain sight. It has good cover above that will help block the rain. The walls or structure are strong enough to block out the wind. Watch out for needles, feces, landmines, and fentanyl zombies. The ground is level and you see no signs of it being a puddle magnet. There are plenty of bushes around in case you have a bathroom emergency during the night. The parking lot is well lit and has security patrol signs posted. A lot of security vehicle patrols drive through twice a night and rarely get out of their vehicles. Your stealth camping spot is near a business that is open 24-7 like a 7-Eleven. And the most important rule of all, escape routes. Always have multiple ways of egress or avenues of escape. If someone is approaching you or trying to do you harm, you want to have at least two ways to escape. It's tempting to hide in the nooks and crannies, but you are literally trapping yourself in a corner. And nobody puts baby in a corner. Remember these rules. They're important.